Welcome to the College Basketball Breakdown. I am your host, Nancy Holtis, joined alongside all sports expert, Lang Whitman, and our numbers guru and our sports book manager here at Oakland, Zach Gillum. Guys, let's get down to business and talk Thursday's game. Uh, the matchup in the West region between number four seed, the Arkansas Razorbacks, and the 13th seed, the Vermont Catamounts. Now, this game is going to take place in Buffalo, and the Hogs are ranked 16th overall in the tournament, and many think did have the toughest schedule in the country. Now, Vermont does a great job shooting the three, have two first-team all-conference players, so many think that Arkansas will have to force them into mistakes. Zach, what do the numbers tell us? Yeah, looking at this one, this one's going to be a lot of fun, going to have a lot of interest on Thursday. Um, currently, we have Arkansas minus five. Total in this game is set at 139. If you're looking at the money line, currently Arkansas minus 225, Vermont plus 175. This game is a little bit concerning for me as an Arkansas fan. Uh, they have played the two of the last three games. The Razorbacks have trailed by 20 points at some point in the game, and they got to get that fixed. And they got to get that fixed by getting off to a faster start on offense. And they need J.D. Note and Jalen Williams to stay out of foul trouble to keep a good flow on offense. Uh, only TCU that is in the tournament is a worse three-point shooting team than Arkansas. So knocking down some threes is always a key. If the Razorbacks can do that, a victory you know could be at hand. On the Vermont side, as Nancy mentioned, they are a very good three-point shooting team. They have three players averaging over 40% on three-pointers made. They're also a good two-point shooting team, second in the tournament, averaging 58% on two-point shots. This is a very good shooting team. The Racebacks defense must be on point. Uh, you know, I'm going to lean in this game for an Arkansas win, but a Vermont cover. I think this game could go down to the wire six of the last nine games that the Razorbacks have played have been a one possession game with a minute left. I think the Razorbacks win, but it's going to be a good one. All right, go hogs. Go now in the East division, a uh, seven seed Murray state racers take on the 10th seed San Francisco Dons. Now the racers are averaging 79.3 points per game. They rank 20th in the country in look out. For K.J. Williams, he averages 18.2 points and 8.6 rebounds per game. Zach, let's talk numbers. Yeah, and this is one that uh, whenever the line opened up, this game did take a lot of action throughout the country, which did shift the line a, bit, a little bit. So currently you have Murray State at minus 1.5, the total in this game at 136.5. If you're looking at the money line, you have Murray State at minus 125 being the favorite, and San Francisco's at plus 102, so just a little better than even money. Yeah, Murray State on one of the longest winning streaks in the country. They're 30 and two on the season and have won 20 straight games uh, in the Ohio Valley. Uh, Justice Hill, the Little Rock native, from, graduated from Little Rock Christian, uh, is their starting point guard. He's the MVP of the conference tournament, averaging uh, 13 points a game and five assists, leading the way uh, for Murray State. But are they getting a little tired as the season goes on, as the pressure mounts, as the winning streak mounts, Four of their last uh, seven wins have been by four points or less. On the other side, San Francisco, uh, they've only lost one game since January 19th to somebody not named Gonzaga or St. Mary's. Gonzaga, the top team in, in the field, the number one seed overall. St. Mary's will play uh, also in the NCAA tournament. So they've been beating all the teams that they are supposed to beat, just not the top teams. So San Francisco has played better competition this year. San Francisco's defense, number two overall among teams in the NCAA tourney, allowing only 29% on made threes. I'm going to lean towards San Francisco here in a slight upset. Now let's talk the Friars and the Jackrabbits. That means the number four Providence against number 13, South Dakota State. Now the Midwest division is kind of where we have seen upsets happen. Now last year alone, five upsets by team seeded at least five seeds lower took place. Can it happen here? It can. Looking at this one, we currently have Providence minus two, so a two-point favorite against South Dakota. 
total in this game is at 149 and a half. If you're looking at the money line, Providence minus 136, South Dakota plus 110. Yeah, Providence is the team that's 25 and 5 on the season, but they started 21 and 2. Uh, four and three their last seven games. Uh, you know, they're maybe stumbling a little bit down down the stretch. They are great in close games, but will that catch up with them? They are 11 and two this year in games decided by five points or less. Now the Jackrabbits, this is the best shooting team in the country. I know we talked about Vermont being a good shooting team. South Dakota State is even better. They're number one in the country at 44% on made threes. 56% on made twos. That's top 10 in the tournament. Uh, now their Achilles heel is their defense. Their defense isn't very good. So Providence can take advantage of some of that. But South Dakota State has also been in the NCAA tournament three of the last four years. They have yet to break through with a victory, but they do have close losses to Texas and Ohio State by six and eight points. I'm going to lean towards South Dakota State springing the upset in this game. All right, with the Jackrabbits there, probably a little quicker than a fryer on foot anyway. Now let's keep it in the Midwest and talk a very close matchup between number nine, the Creighton Blue Jays, and the number eight seed, that is the San Diego State Aztecs. Uh, the showdown will take place in Fort Worth. This will be Creighton's fourth straight trip to the NCAA tour tournament via an at-large bid, which is very interesting. Yeah, and looking at this one, we currently have San Diego State minus two. Total in this game lower than these others we've talked about. A little bit more of a defensive battle. Total at 120. Looking at the money line, San Diego State minus 137 with Creighton at plus 110. Yeah, you know, Zach, when I, I made some notes on these games that we were going to talk about last night, one note I put to myself before I saw the total was that the winner of this game is whoever could get to 60 first. And then you see the total being low like that. M maybe that's the case. And I think that falls into the hands of San Diego State. This is a defensive team. They've been playing great defense for the Aztecs for years now. Their team is always based around defense, and offense is always kind of shaky. Whereas Creighton, Creighton's always been an offensive team in the past as they made several trips to the tournament. But this year, they're more like San Diego State. They rely on defense and a little spotty on offense. I just got to lean with San Diego State because that has their, been, been their MO, defense, winning close games. That's the way they've been doing it for years. I'm going to lean toward them in this game. All right, that gets us through Thursday's matchups. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be talking Friday, including the Tigers of LSU. The new Oaklawn Racing Casino Resort is now open and has more of everything you want. Enjoy more comfort in our luxurious hotel. Experience more flavors in our restaurants. Breathe in more relaxation in the new Astral Spa and take in more 24-7 action in our casino. Book your escape at oaklawn.com and find more this weekend. Oaklawn, a new level of luxury. Welcome back to the college tournament breakdown as we kick off with the Friday action we're going to start off in the South region and discuss number four seed, the Illinois Fighting Illini against the number 13 Chattanooga Mocs. Now, while Chattanooga does seem to have one of the best effective field goal rates offensively, it might not be enough to overcome the Illinois defense that does rank in the top 30. Zach? What do the numbers tell us? Yeah, looking at this one, so we currently have Illinois as the favorite, minus 7.5. Total in this game is set at 135.5. Looking at the money line, Illinois is minus 360, Chattanooga plus 270. And just a real, real quick breakdown on what those odds mean. So for Illinois, minus 360, that means you have to put up $360 to profit 100. On the plus 270, that's telling you for every 100 you bet, you're going to profit 270. So if you wagered 100, we would return you $370, 270 of that is profit. Yeah, as far as Illinois goes, they are a team that's confusing to me. I really wanted to like Illinois all year. They have a lot of components of a possible championship team. Uh, they have three guys that have made over 53 pointers on their team. They have a big man inside in Kofi Coburn, seven foot, 280 pounds. I mean, he's just a mountain of a man inside. But, <laughs> but I got to wonder going into this tournament game, last year they were a number one seed and they got upset in the second round by Loyola Chicago. And 
is that still on their mind? What is their mindset going into this tournament? They have great metrics all across the board on this team, but they're only nine and six their last 15 games. Uh, you look at Chattanooga, they are a veteran team. They have three senior starters and a junior. Uh, they do have a big man that could counteract Coburn for Illinois in uh, D'Souza, who is a transfer from Kansas. He's 6'9", 260, so Coburn won't just have his run of the lane. So that, that's something that is a plus for Chattanooga. Uh, their winners are 14 of their last 17 games. Uh, until Illinois shows me that, that they are ready to take a big step forward and, and play up to what their metrics show they are, I'm going to lean toward Chattanooga. Well, Lang, it's interesting you you talk about a transfer because there's a as we head west, there's a very interesting plot twist. Some might say around number seven Michigan State Spartans and the number ten Davidson Wildcats. Now, Davidson guard Foster Lawyer played for Michigan State three seasons from 2018 through 2021. He was even team captain. During that 2020-2021 season, he played 86 career games for MSU. He only averaged 2.6 get points per game, but we fast forward as Lawyer has started nearly every game for Davidson, averaging a much higher 16.4 points, 3.3 assists, and 3.1 rebounds per game. So an interesting kind of matchup here. Zach, what are we thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Looking at this one, Michigan State is your favorite slightly. They are minus one and a half. Total on this game is at 140 and a half. If you're looking at Michigan State on the money line, they're minus 125 with Davidson coming in at plus 102. Yeah, and I went into looking at this game, but before the bracket was even announced, Davidson was, was one team I had my eye on that I could maybe could pull an upset, but I'm not sure that the Michigan State matchup is really good for Davidson. Uh, Michigan State is very good on the perimeter. Uh, they're in the top 10 among tournament teams in three-point percentage, and they're in the top 20 among tournament teams in three-point defense. Davidson is really a three-point shooting team. They have three guys that have made, uh, or they're six in the tournament uh, in, in three-point percentage made. They have three guys that have over 63s made during the season but I'm not sure that they're going to have that much success against a Michigan State team. That's 7-2, and two, their last nine opening round games in the tournament, even though they are 5-8 and eight in their last 13 games coming into the tournament this year. They kind of stumbled down the stretch, but I'm still going to probably lean toward Tom Izzo and, and his uh, expertise uh, winning NCAA tournament games. All right, we talked about it going into the break. Got to talk about LSU Tigers in the Midwest bracket as they take on the number 11 Iowa State Cyclones. Now, this matchup might be a little hard to predict and possibly overshadowed as the talk will be about the controversy surrounding the firing of LSU coach Will Wade this past Saturday on rule violations. And ironically, this is the second time he's been unable to coach a Tigers team that he has led to the NCAA tournament, but the numbers, Zach, are what's important. Yes, absolutely. Looking at this, the LSU Tigers are currently minus four. Total in this game set at 126. If you're looking at the money line, LSU minus 190 with Iowa State at plus 150. And, you know, I'm not sure that Will Wade getting fired is really going to hurt LSU. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, they played well w without him uh, a couple years ago. I, I kind of look for them and, and interim coach Kevin Nickelberry to kind of rally the troops in this game. I mean, LSU, when they're playing their best, their defense is devastating. They're the top five defensive efficiency team in the country. Uh, they're in the top five in the country in three-point defense, in steals, in turnover rate. Uh, if they get the great effort out of their defense against an Iowa State team, that you look at their offense – in two of the last three games, they've put up 36 points and 41 points. That's not a recipe for a win if LSU brings the intensity and brings their defense. i got to lean toward the Tigers here. There you go. Now, we're looking at a West Coast versus East Coast matchup, even though it's in the Midwest region, as the number seven USC Trojans take on the number 10 Miami Hurricanes. Uh, now, Miami has been really impressive this season, uh, including a road win against Duke. 
They improved defensively and closed out the season with 282 steals this year, ranking them 13th in the nation. Do we see a potential upset? That is very possible. Looking at this matchup, we currently have USC minus one and a half total in this game at 139. If you're looking at the money line, USC is minus 125 with Miami at plus 102. And looking at USC, they're nine and four their last 13 games heading into the tournament with two losses uh, to Arizona and UCLA. So they've only lost to top teams. They've beaten everybody else. And the key is their defense. Uh, they're the top seven in three-point defense, and they're the top two teams in two-point defense. Combine that with Miami, who is a poor rebounding team. Miami must turn over USC with those steals, as you mentioned, Nancy, to, to get any offense generated in this game. Like I said, Miami is a poor rebounding team. Uh, they are the worst defense against two-point shots in the tournament. So USC, I mean, I can see them just getting the ball on the rim, grabbing the rebound, and keep shooting until they make it. So I'm going to lean toward the Trojans in this game. All right, we are going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk about all these teams potentially getting closer to those crucial rounds. The new Oaklawn Racing Casino Resort is now open and has more of everything you want. Enjoy more comfort in our luxurious hotel. Experience more flavors in our restaurants. Breathe in more relaxation in the new Astral Spa and take in more 24-7 action in our casino. Book your escape at oaklawn.com and find more this weekend. Oaklawn, a new level of excitement. Welcome back to the college basketball breakdown, and it is time to talk about some future bets. And first off, let's get to the round of 16, Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, so when we're looking at this round of 16, we actually have these markets listed as a yes, no. So if you're wagering on the yes, that means you think they will reach this point. The no means you think they will not reach this point. So looking at Texas Tech, the yes is a minus 230 with the no at a plus 165, which indicates the line makers do think that Texas Tech will reach that round of 16. Looking at Auburn, a little heavier favorite in terms of making it that far, minus 275 with the no at plus 195. Yeah, and looking at Texas Tech, they are the top defensive team in the country. Uh, teams in their path to the round of 16 include Montana State, Rutgers, Notre Dame, who a lot of people don't even think should even be in the tournament, and Alabama, who's a schizophrenic at best. <laughs> so I think that, that Texas Tech to this round is a solid yes. Auburn, here's another team that uh, has Jacksonville State, Miami, who I don't think is going to beat USC, and USC in their path. But the Trojans have lost to every top team they've played so far. So Auburn to the round of 16, I'll say yes. All right, fast forward on to that round of eight, which is next. Let's discuss the UCLA Bruins and the Tennessee Volunteers. Yes, looking at that round of eight. So now these odds on the yes are going to be getting a little more enticing. Um, with UCLA at plus 135 on the yes, the no is at minus 182. We have Tennessee at plus 175 with the no at minus 240. Yeah, and UCLA being a veteran team, all five starters back from the national semifinals last year. Uh, Baylor is in their path as the number one seed that looks like the toughest team. I'm not a big believer in Baylor. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think Kentucky probably should have been the number one seed in the region, but they're the number two. Uh, so UCLA get to the round of eight. I like it. Also, Tennessee, 12 and one. Their last 13 games, winners of the SEC tournament in rousing fashion. Uh, looks like Villanova is their main threat to get to the round of eight. Uh, Villanova is a very good three-point shooting team, but I think Tennessee can shut that down. The question about Tennessee will be their two, two freshman guards, Ziegler and Chandler. Uh, how did they react in these pressure-packed situations? Taking one step closer to the big one, but we got to talk the semis first. That is the Kansas Jayhawks and, of course, Gonzaga. Yeah, looking at this one, Gonzaga is your number one overall seed. So for them to make it to the semifinals, it is minus 200. Um, they are the only team at minus odds for this market. 
looking at the other team, Kansas, they are plus 150. Yeah, and looking at Gonzaga, I know uh, I don't really want this to happen. I would like for Arkansas to get to this point, but it's tough to go against Gonzaga. I mean, they've been to the, the final game two of the last four or five years. Uh, they are a heavy favorite to get uh, to this national semifinals this year. And uh, Texas Tech, I think, might be the team that could give them the most problems with that tough defense that they play. Uh, as far as Kansas, I'm not in love with this pick, but I tell you what, the other teams in their region, the two, three, four seeds, Auburn, Wisconsin, and Providence, I like them less. So I will go with Kansas out of that region to get to the semifinals. Let's talk finale and maybe Wildcat versus Wildcat, Arizona and Kentucky. Yeah, looking at this one, so championship, this is to win it all. We have Arizona at plus 600. Kentucky is at the same odds at plus 600. Yeah, Arizona has everything you need to win a title except tournament game experience. They only have one player on their team that's ever played in an NCAA tournament game. Their head coach has been a, a, an assistant at Gonzaga for the last whoever knows how many years, uh, and he hasn't been a head coach in an NCAA tournament game. But, boy, are they impressive to watch. They have three guys, 6'10", or, or bigger across the front line they can play. They have a shooting guard who is the Pac-12 Player of the Year. They have a great point guard who's injured a little bit right now. But it didn't matter over the weekend as they just played a devastating second half against uh, UCLA, the second best effort I've seen any team make against a good team all year. I look for Arizona to go a long ways in this tournament. And they could cut the nets down. As far as Kentucky goes, they are the winner of the other best effort of the year when they went to Kansas earlier this year and won by 18 points. I think Kentucky's ceiling is as high as anybody. Uh, yes, they're coming off a loss, and they haven't played as well as they maybe can, but I look for Coach Calipari to have this team revved up going into the NCAA tournament. Uh, Baylor is a weak number one seed, I think. I think Kentucky is definitely better than they are. Kentucky's going to go a long ways. So we've taken you through the whole tournament, but – Let's back it up a little and give you a first round outright upset. As we touched on it earlier, some big upsets have come out of that Midwest division. 14 seed Colgate, potentially over third seed Wisconsin. Yeah, and this is a team that almost upset uh, Arkansas last year in that first round. Looking at this one, we have Wisconsin as the favorite in this game, minus seven and a half. But since we're talking the outright, let's talk the money line. Colgate plus 265. So every 100 you wager, you're going to get back 365. 265 of that is profit. Wisconsin minus 360. Plus 265, that's a good price. Wisconsin is a team that is ordinary outside of one great player, and that's Johnny Davis. He's very, very good. He's lifted Wisconsin all the way up nearly by himself to a three seed. He's a little banged up now, and – Wisconsin didn't play great over the weekend. Their metrics aren't very good. And meanwhile, Colgate now has NCAA tournament experience from the Arkansas game last year, where at one point they led by 14 points before Arkansas righted the ship and pulled away in the second half. Uh, here's another team that shoots over 40% as a team from three-point land. Colgate can get hot. Wisconsin's not very good outside of Johnny Davis. This could be an outright upset. Well, we hope you enjoy the NCAA tournament. We have given you the numbers. We have given you the expert analysis. For Zach Lang, I'm Nancy. Thank you so much for joining us here on the College Basketball Breakdown.